Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Set Play, and today I am going to be doing a review of the Derwin Inktense pencils. I will also be giving you tips and tricks on layering these pencils while doing this fairy drawing. As some of you know, I have worked with the Derwin Inktense pencils in the past actually quite a lot, but it has occurred to me that I haven't actually done an like a review on my channel for them. You've seen me do one with the blocks, but not so much the pencils. And the pencils themselves have a lot of great abilities when you use them on their own, so I think that this would be a great opportunity to give you an overview of the pencils and the techniques you can use with them if you don't have the blocks. So... Full disclosure, this tin was sent to me by Derwent. However, they did not pay me any money for this review. These opinions are going to be 100% my own. And as you know, I have had experience with this product in the past. So you will know that what I am saying to you is from experience and 100% my own opinion. So let's jump into this product a little bit more. I'm very excited that this tin has Lisa Klaus artwork on it. I love her. So very excited about that. And look at this. So let's kind of get into the basics of this product. This handy dandy <laughs> pen here. Novelty pen that I bought not long ago. I'm going to open this up, which I just think is so satisfying. If you are an art supply nut like I am, opening things up so beautiful. So, excuse the noise. What we have here is the 72 set of the pencils, and as you can see, there is a wide variety here of pencils. So, let's get into the basics of the information that is on each pencil. So, each pencil is has a four millimeter core, which I believe is close to a standard size for the Derwent pencils. They all seem to have that really nice round barrel and a nice thick lead or core, as we should say. And it feels just quality. It's all painted. And of course, you have the tip that is painted to look like the the color itself. Some people have complained in the past that the color is a little bit different, but I think that this color is supposed to match the color of the core once it is washed out with water. And I'm sorry if that's not focusing. So on the side here, you're going to see that it says Derwent Ink Tents and the color and the color name so that you can order the pencils open stock. So if you run out of your favorite color, you can replace it. And it says that it's made in England like most of Derwent's products. So that's like the basics. They come pre-sharpened. You have your colors right here. Beautiful line. Gorgeous packaging as usual. Nice tin if you want to keep it in there. They lift out. So that's pretty much the basics of these pencils as far as the aesthetics go. So diving a little bit deeper into the information, one thing that I have noticed that they don't have on the side is a light fast rating. However, they do have a downloadable color chart on their website. I will link that in the description below. And they do say that 87% of the range is light fast. So that's something that is very exciting. And in the color chart, it shows you the light fast ratings. So you have that information readily available right online. Like I said, I will link it in the description below. So if you're someone who like who's like me and you care about light fast ratings, you can weed out the ones that are considered to be fugitive or the ones that are going to fade the fastest. However, they do specify as well on their website in their frequently asked questions that the the light fastness may change once the water has been added to them. And I think what that really means is that once it's really washed out, it could obviously fade easier because there's less pigment involved. But these are a pigment-based pencil. And the basic idea of these is instead of a watercolor pencil that washes out into watercolor, they actually, when added, when water is added, turn into ink. And these are a pigment-based ink, so you have more of a chance of them being light fast to begin with because, in general, pigment-based inks are a little bit more light fast than dye-based inks. So that is something that they have going for them. 
Okay, so switching over to time lapse and voiceover, I'm going to be working on a project of a fairy sitting in a flower. And I thought that this would be a fun piece to demonstrate all the vibrant colors and the versatility of this medium. So now that we have gone over a general review of these pencils and talked about how they look, I want to talk about some different tips and tricks that you can do while working with this medium. Mainly, I'm going to talk about layering because that is one of the unique and wonderful things about this medium is the ability to layer it. And that is because it is ink and it's permanent. So it doesn't lift as easily as watercolor or watercolor pencils. Now, I should say that there are some times that it is easier to lift these than others. And that comes down to how you are using them. And I do not see this as a bad thing because... I do like to use some lifting sometimes, but you have to catch it at the right time. For instance, if you have just washed down your first layer and it hasn't dried yet and you haven't completely diluted all of the color, it's going to be much easier to lift. So when you first wet it down, if it's still wet, then obviously you can go in with a paper towel before it really has the chance to sink into the paper and lift it some. But even then, it will stain. And then another time would be, again, as I mentioned, if you have not let it dilute completely and you're still seeing some pencil strokes or, you know, just the pigment hasn't really been wet down completely, then there are times when you can lift as well, but not nearly the same as when you're working with watercolor. So that may, means that you can layer over it really easily without making mud and without worrying about the bottom layer lifting into the top layer. So I want to talk about some of the ways that we can layer these pencils. There's a few different ways that you can work. Dry on dry, where you have already diluted the under layer and then you decide to go over with the pencils on top for detail. So like for instance, I did the background, I diluted it completely, I let it dry. And then if I want to do some details, I could come over it after and just leave the pencil dry. And then you can also do wet on dry, which is like a glazing. So if I have, for again, in the background, I have layered quite a few layers there already. And some of those are actually glazes where I went in, I put down my general color and I left some lighter spots and then I went in again and I glazed some color over that. And you can do this a few different ways. So a lot of times if I want to just use these like a watercolor, I will scribble them on a separate surface and then I will wet my brush and lift the color that way and layer it over my paper that way. So it's similar to using it like a watercolor pan. But there are times when you can also go on, like I said, dry and actually wet it down and it will still layer. So an example would be going in and putting down my first layer on this petal and then letting that dry. And then if I wanted to just slightly darken it, go in with a few pencil strokes, bringing my wetted brush back to it and then going over those new pencil strokes so that it will dilute the new pencil strokes and make it a darker pink layered over the lighter pink that was already underneath. And then you can do wet on semi-wet, which is when it's not completely diluted and you can kind of mix the layers. And so this is something that you have to be careful of because it's such a permanent medium. You have to be very mindful of maybe just wetting it down a little bit and not letting it fully dry and then, you know, coming back in with the ink tents if you want to mix it that way. And it's not as common because again, once it's dry, and if it's already been fully diluted, it becomes quite permanent. And then there is a technique that you can use that is dry on wet. And this is something that is probably more for people who want to do abstract or graphic. If you take your dry pencil and draw it over the wet surface while the water is still there, you will get a highly saturated, colorful line. Like it really is very, very saturated. And... The line tends to be a little bit fuzzier 
And when you do that, it can be a little bit harder to correct later because there's just so much color that's coming down at the same, like it's just so highly saturated. So really you, you wanna make sure you experiment with these things and these techniques on a scrap piece of paper before you do it on your surface or your actual drawing, just in case you get results that you don't really like. I always recommend experimenting with it because you never know a technique might work for an effect that you are looking for. And then, of course, you can layer them just with the pencil and then go in and wet. In a lot of these areas, I went in and I put two or three layers of pencil, even different colors, and then wet it all at once. And then I mix the color that way on my paper. And there's always the option of just using them like colored pencils and not wetting them at all. And they work very similarly to colored pencils in that way. You can layer them. They're fairly transparent. There are some colors that are more opaque than others. But there are a lot of different techniques you can use. So something that you'll see here when I'm doing the center of the flower, a lot of times I will just go in with a dry line and I won't fill in the details. I will do an outline and then I will take the water and do a wash over those outlines and let that wash of color fill in the middle of the subject. So for instance, all these little spurs that are in the middle of the flower, I went and outlined them in the color and then I went around. It's kind of like when you, I don't know if you ever had those coloring books, those magic coloring books that the outlines in the coloring books were made of like some type of watercolor and you would just take your wet brush and water it over and then magically it all became colored. It's kind of like that. You just draw your outline and then you go over it with your wet brush and use the color that comes from your outline and tint everything that you are trying to that way. And that's a lot of fun. I did that quite a bit in this project. I do that a lot with the petals. I'll put the veins and everything in the petals and then I'll just come through and wet the brush instead of coloring the whole petal pink and that way there I got a more diluted pink and it was a little bit more of a softer color as opposed to just like this bright bright saturated pink because these are very vibrant so a little goes a long way and that's something else that's wonderful about these is that they will last you a very long time because there is a huge color payout they are all very very vibrant so the only pencil that I really didn't have as much of a good time with was the white. And you'll see at times I was able to use it to lighten things. I found it worked best when I colored it on a scrap piece of paper and then diluted it with my brush and then put it on the, the paper that way. So using it like a watercolor pan, I found it was better that way. But even then, it usually only lightened things up. It did help me to fix mistakes. But for my highest highlights... I usually left the white of the paper or I came through with the Derwent Drawing Chinese White, which I must say is my all-time favorite white anyways. I'm already biased towards that pencil. I use the Derwent Drawing Chinese White in every colored pencil piece that I do. It is the only white. It's my go-to white. So I'm very spoiled by how opaque that one is, so I must admit that that has kind of tainted my opinion of the white pencil here. Also, I have used the ink tents blocks quite extensively, and the white block seems to be a little bit more opaque than their white pencil, and I'm not sure if it's something to do with the concentration. I, I'm i really not sure how that works. I don't, I don't think that they, the formula is much different, but I would say that it's not that opaque, but you can use it to correct things, and you can layer on top of that as well. So there are times when I did that for glazing. If I want to lighten something up on a certain flower, I would go in with the white, and then I would come back over with the pink, and it would end up giving me a lighter pink. So it worked out really well in that aspect. And as far as the wings go, it was quite fun to actually do transparent wings. Basically, I just did a lighter layer of everything, all the background colors, and didn't keep layering them. I only just did a few layers of them. And then to kind of smarten things up a bit and give the impression of veins and wings, I brought some blue in and some of my white Derwent Ink Tense pencil and 
I diluted that and put it over to do a very light white glaze. And for my highest highlights, I went right back in with that Derwent drawing. But every pencil that I used, I pretty much loved. And I just think it's such a versatile medium. And I've been working with these for quite a few years now. You have seen them in some of my videos, even though I hadn't done a review until now. And I use these quite a lot for on the go. They're great if you are traveling and you just want something fun and you want something vibrant and you just throw them in your travel case and you go with them. So you, right there you can kind of see that I'm using that Derwent drawing Chinese white. And you can tell that I have used it quite a bit because it's a lot shorter than these newer pencils that I'm using. And I'm going back and forth with this. I really loved the idea of doing something that has a lot of different textures so that I could show the versatility of these pencils. Clearly, it was quite easy for me to get a bokeh background with these because of their blendability and because of the fact that I could layer. So I kept going into that background back and forth and I layered and I layered and I layered until I liked it. And these pencils did exactly what I needed them to do for that. So when I start working on her, I didn't want to start too dark. I like to work pretty much from light to dark with these, just like I would with watercolor pencils or with regular watercolors, because sometimes you have to preserve highlights. But also, because these are so vibrant, I like to work with them in thinner layers so that I can build it up that way. So I don't go in and just have like pack such a punch immediately because I want to be able to gauge my values. So for instance, on her dress, I started very light. I used a few pencil strokes, mainly around the perimeters of the dress and in the wrinkles. So that way there, I could just use the, the pigment that was in those lines and wash them out like I did on the petals and then have an overall very light pink wash on her dress and I wanted to be able to gauge it against the skin tone so I didn't do much more until after I had more shadows and more skin tone in. As far as the skin tones go, I again did not want to start with them too dark. There's not actually a skin tone, a Caucasian skin tone pencil in this set. So I mixed my own. So what you see over there is a scrap of paper which is just what I cut off from the end of this paper when I first cut it down to size. And I scribbled the colors that I needed, which were mainly, I think, like a yellow ochre. I don't know the technical names of the colors right now. You know, reddish browns, earthy yellows, and brown. And I mixed them together on my page. And I used some violet and some light blues. And I mixed them together on that scrap piece of paper. And while it was still wet, I lifted it just like I would if it were watercolor, and then I painted it on my page. That way there, I was able to layer subtly. So that's another form of layering where you just layer with your brush, and you build and build. And that's what I did with all the skin tones here. And then later on, when I was sure of how I wanted to have the highlights and... Once I had most of my shadows in, if I wanted to pack more of a punch, then I went in with browns and things like that to darken the shadows a little bit, just with the pencil. And then I would wet it down again and layer it that way. And then towards the end, I used just the pencil without wetting it down. And I did a similar technique with the hair, but I went in and I knew that the hair was going to be quite a bit darker and I wanted to start off with it to be darker. So again, I could gauge the skin tones as I kept going back and forth. And one reason why I went back and forth so often is because I was letting it dry. So that way there, I didn't lift the under layer and I could glaze. So you'll see me go back and forth between the skin, the hair, the dress. Occasionally I'll go back to the wings and you know, it's just a process of checking my values, making sure I'm getting my lights light enough, my darks dark enough, and allowing the medium to dry so that I could use it the way it needed to be used. Okay, so that is the final piece. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you have learned something about Derwent Intense pencils. I would obviously highly recommend these pencils. I want to thank Derwent for sending me some to play around with. Again, this is something that I've worked with for years and have loved, and I would not be recommending them to you now if I didn't absolutely love this product. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.
Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.